So we made a song about Bruno. Hey guys, welcome back to the Bucket Think Tank for the round of comic chat. And today we're getting into it with some good old Disney villains. And our fun quote of the day is appropriate for the song, Mirabelle. I, I couldn't find Bruno, so we got Mirabelle. Uh, but either way, we don't talk about the fact I couldn't find Bruno. So anyway, our first book is Hades. So, Hades issue two. If you recall, we last left off with Hades. Uh, this story is, he's like, you know, he's got to find a way to stick it to the gods, let him know that he's the man in charge, and that he should be, like, you know, um, above Zeus. So the whole plan is find the Golden Fleece. So he's assembled a crack team of operatives. Strong word, strong word, but, you know, it's got um, Arachne, who lost a weaving contest to Athena and was turned into a spider. Orpheus, a guy who tried to save his love from the underworld, where Hades said all you had to do was walk out and not look back, and he looked back, and so now, yeah, she's stuck. And Icarus. And uh, Icarus doesn't really have much that he wants, but, you know, where Arachne wants to be human again, Orpheus wants his girlfriend back while he continues to hit on other women, Icarus wants real wings. So they're all set, and what's their mission? Finding the Golden Fleece, not knowing that Jason and the Argonauts are on their way to do it too. Jason, who's been totally rewritten to be, well, maybe not rewritten, but to be a sort of, probably a nicer version of Gaston, with the same ego, but it's like, nah, dude, she said no, we're good. <laughs> okay. Um, which make all the difference for Gaston as a character. So, we start with, you know, the company going in, we need one more member. We Look, we've already got Flight, we've got... Um, We've got spider webs, we've got music, you know, we've got everything, but we need some muscle. And so we have to go to the labyrinth. And what's in the labyrinth? Well, the only thing that's ever in any labyrinth is the Minotaur. And so this isn't my favorite take, take on the Minotaur. It's not my least favorite either. Um, I think my favorite is still from the 87 DuckTales, which is a giant stone statue, very Godzilla-esque. Um... But, you know, I also like the Minotaur and Rick Riordan's world where, you know, it dies, comes back, you know, eventually. So, there was that. But anyway, this is a simple little brute, and it works for the other sort of being told. We just need him to be muscle, and he really is, you know, like the Minotaur, super strong, super dangerous. And Hades is able to stop him with a cookie. And that's all that's needed. So, Hades now has a Minotaur on him, so... That's great. Meanwhile, Jace and the Argonauts are setting sail for Ecolos. So, yeah, we're all set Ecolos, and then we'll go to Colchis, and everything's set. Everything is set. We're good. We're... Anyway, they're all, while they're going off here, Hades gives a rundown of exactly what they plan to do here. So, the whole plan really is pretty much a D&D &D campaign, which is actually kind of wild when you think about it. So, Arachne's job will be to take care of the guards with her threat, all right? Because she's a spider, spit out the thread. Icarus will be the scout, scouting for traps. All right. Uh, the Minotaur will deal with the punch punch, the manual labor. And Orpheus is, he's super important. He will sing the dragon that guards the golden fleece to sleep. All right. And then we take it, we take the fleece, I go, I show it to the gods, and all will be right with the world as I prove that I am the superior. Yeah, sound good, sound good, and then you get the, the stuff you want. Yeah, whatever. All right. Sadly, this all goes to pot when Medusa turn, shows up to tell the king of Colchis what's going on here. And he's like, okay, what's really funny is they're still like, hey, so um, th that's great, Medusa. Would you um, like a visor or a blindfold or something? She's like, no, nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> um, uh, the king tells his daughter, Medea, like, hey, look, don't fall in love anyone else he's like i'm not gonna do that then she sees jason like oh hang on he's he's kind of he's kind of pretty um really my favorite part about this is still the medusa scene here it's like yeah you know you don't have to look but whatever i'm not gonna change yeah whatever also fun fact remember um hades did try to get medusa on his team too and she was like nah I'm not gonna do it but um uh, i wonder why she's involved now but anyway so 
as they go as they go off sailing, they have Charon. I hope I said his name right. He, you know, the the one who ferries souls across the river. Uh, uh, as the as the as the Roman, and he's like, yeah, sure. Um, so I have a question. If I'm here, who's ferrying souls to the app to the you know, to the underworld? No, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. A little backed up, but it's fine. It's super backed up. Uh, Spirit Airlines all over again. So meanwhile, um, Arachne's pointing out that hey, Jason is on this stealth mission. Apparently, to you know, we're all going to steal the gold fleece. Why didn't he go around? Like, you know, we are. It's like, well, look, I don't know. Maybe it's just stupid. Um, Arachne points out, maybe we should just send someone to scout. It's Arachne. He goes, fine. Icarus, go scout. See what's back there. So go, go scout ahead. All right. Well, they go to the back. Hades wants to make it clear. Hey, look, I get it. I get it. But I'm in charge. All right. And it's sort of great, hilarious in its own way to see Hades' temper go through here. Icarus comes back like, hey, guys. Um, so here's what's back here. All right, this is the way to Colchis, and like, okay, well, let, let's just go through. And it turns out the reason Jason didn't go to the back. Okay, okay, where am I? Where am I? What, what, what's the time frame of this? What? Ah, I know where we are. I know where we are. Okay, so I am once again me from the future. You may remember me from our. The attempting to fix the Nightmare Before Christmas video. There was another problem. We had to fix it. Um, with this one, there was um, some sort of um, um, paradox occurring due to um, the Daleks. The Daleks, um, the Master, the Cybermen, um, Hades, um, Bob Iger, um, Joss Whedon, and probably Tom King. Right, that's why I stopped my. Di why I was messing with this video here. So um, I'm gonna fix that right here. So just give me a second. This is which one is this? All right, here we are. Shut up. The gateway closes shut like something right out of what the never ending story? This feels like never ending story. Um, but, but, this is, I believe, how it works in, in the story. Maybe it does. I don't, have I ever read Jason the Argonauts? Have I? I don't think I have. I need to get on that. And um, that's how the comic ends. Ultimate Hades issue two is funny. Seeing all these different personalities interact, Orpheus with his sort of pretty boy emo approach to it. Um, Icarus is sort of like you know, um, how I want to say it. Remember Check Matey from Fillmore? He's like that. All right, um, Arachne is still, I think the best character here with her sarcasm. I think that works. Uh, Hades is Hades. You can never not hear James Woods from this take on Hades, which is great. The Minotaur is a lovable idiot. All right, he doesn't ask for much. Um, I think there's still a bit missing with the story here. I think the problem with this sort of approach to the Disney villains is they don't really have that character they play off of very well. Now, granted, in Hades' case, he only played off of Hercules for like five minutes, so there's that. So he could really play off of just about anybody. His real dynamic has always been with his henchmen. So, that, that's the thing. I think that works for him as he's sort of surrounded, not, this time not by full-on idiots, but rather by losers in Greek mythology. Yeah, Arachne was turned to a spider. Orpheus lost the girl of his dreams. Icarus will at some point fly too close to that sun. Again. And um, there's that. And the Minotaur. I don't think I can talk about the Minotaur. Um, exactly the Minotaur. That, that story's kind of messed up. Along came Zeus. But anyway. Anyway, overall fun. Um, I think the real meat of the story will be when they finally get on the island proper. But uh, overall, alright. Next we have Maleficent issue 5. So... This is, this story is just frustrating. So this is the last issue, all right? And I'm trying to wonder where we're going here. But anyway, so let's get into it. So Melissa's doing what she does every story. Stand there. But this time she's actually looking like, hmm, someone's coming into the forest, Diablo. Go see who it is. Diablo's like, 
All right, Kaka, 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 Kaka goes off there, sees this figure like, huh, who's coming into the latest forest? And it's, <laughs> it is, mm, it's a redhead. Um, she's coming in. All right, like, hey, it's all right, my little little dear. I'm, I'm, I'll be fine. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. All right. So Diablo comes in. She's like, oh, pst, I know who you are. She ensnares Diablo like, hey, I know who you are. I know your master sent you. Tell her to come out here. <laughs> so she comes out there. They talk. She's like, ah, I was wondering where they'd send you, wizard. I'm like, y'all know each other? Okay, cool. Um, the, this is sort of where it gets interesting in premise. Uh, but then it's sort of like, hey, yeah, they sent me here. And you know you can't keep doing what you've been doing here. All right, you must be stopped. I'm like, oh, okay, so even the confines of this story, Maleficent has done two terrible things, all right? Two terrible things. And one was because some dude kept trying to stole from her. I can't fault her for that. The other was when his brother came and said, hey, could you um turn my brother back? She decided to turn him into something else, which led it to that. So it's hard to say whether or not Maleficent's in the wrong or in the right here, all right? The question is Maleficent's totally unapologetic about it, all right? She's like, yeah, I did what I did what was best. There you go. No one can stop me. And this has led to that issue. So now it becomes... A wizard duel, all right. Actually, technically, Maleficent is a fairy. So, wizard versus fairy. Is that have we done that before? But either way, either way, anyway. So, Disney's greatest wizard duel is still Merlin versus Madame Mim. All right, that is peak Chef's Kiss great wizard duel. All right, screw Harry Potter. You know, all those duels had nothing on Merlin versus Madame Mim. So, hopefully, this one will have some of that je ne sais quoi. You know, that that sort of spice to it. All right, so they go in, you know, pew, 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 you know, we're throwing vine, throwing thorns. She's like, yeah, don't care, don't care. Shining light, don't care. They were going good. We're calling trees, and you know, Melissa's like, I don't care about trees. I got thorns. She's like, oh, you got with thorns? I'll turn into a deer. And yeah, let's go. Goes after my. She's like, oh, Melissa's like, okay, you're good. You got, you got, you got some chops. I'll show you that. All right, goes in off trying to get me. Nope, turn into a snake. And they fight there, and they fight there, and then it's like comes like this weird sort of stalemate where the wizard goes, well, seems I've under underestimated you a bit, but makes no difference. They go in, there's a clash, and the wizard disappears, and Maleficent's like, huh. All right, that was a bit surprising, but nothing I couldn't handle, but I will have my revenge. And that's how the comic ends, as Maleficent retreats into her forest. Like, literally, end right there. Like, right there. E-N-D. So, is this it? Is that the story? So, are we saying this sets up? Why Maleficent goes to um, to King Stefan's um, castle for the presentation of Aurora, and that's why all this happened? But, does that mean King Stefan is the third son? So King Stefan was sort of forced into the role. And like, but wait, by that logic, why is she surprised he didn't invite her to the presentation? Like, this broad has legit messed with his two older siblings. But no, I don't think that's possible. That doesn't make sense. Because I'm pretty sure that the guy in the first one further, he was like a lower son. Like, third son. So I don't know. Also, I don't think any of those other two looked anything like King Stefan. And that has nothing to do with the fact that the king there was not King Stefan. So, I don't know. I don't know. So, what? Is there another issue? Is there an issue six? If it's an issue six, why does this go with end instead of to be concluded? Or definitely not the end? You know? Epic battle coming next. Also, why would you not pick up from this? Because here's the thing. You've got this, this you know, drop dead, you know, gorgeous wizard. All right? more of her more of her more of that like oh my god first also ignore the fact she's just um yeah um a magical threat to Maleficent it took three good fairies three good fairies not confident fairies they were just good fairies um to stop Maleficent even then they had to outsource Philip to do most of the actual physical labor alright so this is a real possible threat and nothing comes from it at the end of this so, I don't know. It feels like a waste. I don't know. I don't know. I also don't have Maleficent Funko, and that upsets me. 
This is a Hades one too, isn't there? I gotta go through the old collection. Anyway, so with that in mind, let's bring us to a close here. Um, what did you think of this? Did you like it? Did you hate it? Did you think the Maleficent comic needed more? Uh, there was a lot of just nothing going on in this comic, which is a bit depressing. I think there was more of a presence of, I am Maleficent, I am power, all I have to do is stand here and do nothing. Also, I blame the live action movie, because that movie was kind of trash. But anyway, so I will catch you all later. This is about Think Tank signing off. Thanks for watching. As always, may your fandom serve you well.